Hey. Welcome back to another um, young adult unboxing with us. I'm Miss Ashley. I'm Miss Hanna. All right, we can't wait to get started. I know, this is my absolute favorite thing to check out <laughs> what is new for this month. First one I got, Game Changer by Neil Schusterman. He is an awesome author. Definitely check him out if you haven't read anything before by him. This one is about a high school football player that sort of gets knocked on the head and all of a sudden he gets, starts entering like alternate universes. Oh, so fun. I thought it sounded really intriguing. <laughs> that's neat. I'm just gonna grab like a whole bunch. Yes. That's okay, fine. I grabbed a graphic novel. That time I got that time I got reincarnated as a slime. <laughs> <laughs> sounds fun. Don't you love that? Oh, that sounds a lot. Is this, I think this is more fantasy. Yeah. There's an orc lord, 200,000 strong force of monsters. Oh, cool. Yes. And? And this is number four, but we do have, ah, I that's think we have sense. all 10 of the first 10. The art is really nice, and it looks like, oh, lots of actions. Blursh. <laughs> 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 so definitely pick it up. Awesome. What big teeth. Ooh. This cover looks so cool. I don't that know if you can awesome. tell, but it's definitely like Little Red Riding Hood, Wolf. Cool. Uh, wolf teeth in this Werewolves. Girl. Yeah. I love it. So the back says, my grandfather's face was the one I remembered most vividly from childhood, but I didn't feel the way I used to when I looked at him. I was afraid. Oh. <laughs> that sounds good. It says fantasy, like but it might be like a little bit of horror. All right. So I'm a spider. So what? <laughs> <laughs> this is adorable. She's a little pink spider. You gotta read the back of that. Okay, so I'm gonna survive. Just watch me. I was your average everyday high school girl, but now I've been reborn into a magical world as a spider. Wait, this isn't how these stories are supposed to go. <laughs> Can I get a do-over? No? But how am I supposed to survive in this big, scary dungeon as one of the weakest monsters? It's every spider for herself in here. I gotta figure out the rules to this quick, or I'll be kissing my short second life goodbye. <laughs> that's so cute. And there's other little creatures on the back, too. So maybe that's in the series. Oh, wow. That is neat. <laughs> that's something I'm gonna read. Very cute. He had the power, she had the voice. Muted, it's called. Ooh. A novel in verse by Tammy Charles. So you know when a novel's in verse, it's a fast read, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And uh, it sounds like this one is about a 17-year-old girl who wants to become a singing superstar, and she meets the biggest R&B star in the world and gets involved in his world, but then suddenly realizes that she's sort of trapped. So it says, as the dream turns into a nightmare, she must make a choice, lose her big break or get broken. Oh, that sounds like something yeah, else so. you were telling me about too. Yes. What was that? It was grown. Oh yeah. I don't remember the authors. <laughs> my, my memory is <laughs> not so good. good, but yes, grown. And they're, so it sounds like yeah. pretty similar because they're both about the music industry and like abuses that take place behind the scenes. Oh wow. Definitely an exciting read. Oh! Bookish boyfriends. It's another one. Do you remember when I was talking about talk nerdy to me? I absolutely adored that one. This one's called Get a Clue, and it's got two very cute guys. I love it. Okay. So each one is inspired by like a different classic book. Yes, there is actually a teacher in this series that's kind of like a matchmaker, and she uses classic books to do it. It's super cute, whether wittingly or unwittingly. I'm not really sure if she actually wants to pair them together, but she magically does, and it's adorable. So in this one, let's see, the books are Sherlock Holmes. And oh, yep, it's the works of Sherlock Holmes in English class. Mrs. M Mrs. McGuire, that's her name. Mrs. Gre Gregor, excuse me, Gregor. And let's see, in the halls of Reginald R. Hero High. And this time it's Huck and Winston. Huck realizes someone is trying to sabotage Win's acceptance to the school. And as the plot thickens and the sparks fly between the two boys, they have to choose whether to give in to their growing attraction or focus on the case. Give in and focus on the case. <laughs> you know what that's Do it about. all. <laughs> I love it. This one I'm definitely going to read. That's I love cute. that series. So I've got Furia by Yamil Saeed Mendez. It's a Reese's YA book club. Ooh, I didn't know she had a YA I book know, club. I know, I didn't either. I think her 
adult one has been around for a while, but I think mm -hmm. the YA one must be pretty new. And she has some really good picks. So I'm it excited. says, in Rosario, Argentina, Camila Hassan leads a double life. So it takes place in Argentina. That's cool. At home, she's a careful daughter living within her mother's narrow expectations in mm. the shadow of her soccer star brother and under the abusive rule of her short-tempered father. On the field, she is La Furia, a powerhouse of skill and talent. When her team qualifies for the South American tournament, Camilla gets the chance to see just how far these talents can take her. But the path ahead isn't easy. Oh, that sounds, sounds really good. Yeah, it does, does sound awesome. awesome. All right, I have four graphic novels, and it looks like it's right in the middle of the series. You got 10, 11, 12, and 13. And it's Horamiya, Horamiya by Hiro Daisuke Hagiwara. And let's see, it says, the sweet, awe-inspiring tale of school life continues. So it looks like it's like one of those slice of life, uh, high school romance ones. Very cute. Nice. We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire by Joy McCullough. Oh, I like that title. I know. Gives me the goosebumps. <laughs> Ed Morales' sister was raped after a frat party. A jury found the attacker guilty on all counts. A remarkable verdict that M felt more than a little proud of since her passionate social media advocacy helped to dissuade the DA from settling for a plea deal. But victory is short-lived. He just knew there was going to be a but. Yeah. Justice vanishes as the judge turns the Morales' family's world upside down again by sentencing the rapist to no prison time. While her family is stunned, M is sick with rage and guilt. To make matters worse, she tells a reporter the sentence makes her want to learn how to use the sword, and the news clip goes viral. Oh. M must find a new reason to keep fighting, and it comes in the unlikely form of a story of a 15th century French noblewoman, Marguerite de Brissieux, legendary as an avenging knight for rape victims. Wow. So where is that going to go? No. I'm super curious about that. That's awesome. All right. Very intriguing. Okay. I have another graphic novel, and it's Grand Theft Horse. And this is a Coretta Scott King Award winning, oh, the author of Yummy, and that's G. Neri. So... Oh yes, I've heard of this one. This is the true story. This is actually like the graphic biography of Gail Rufo, or Rufu, if I'm saying it right. And she was a rookie trainer for horse, horse racing. And she falls in love with her, her um, horse, Urgent Envoy, and he gets injured in a race. And she refuses to drug him to put him down to sleep. And unfortunately, she co-owns the horse, so the, the co-owners push him in the races more. So what does she do? She steals the horse. On Christmas Eve, she rescues her own horse. And she's a modern-day outlaw. She evaded private investigators and refused to give the horse up. And black, blacklisted by the racing world, she learned the law at night to take on the powerful L.A. attorney determined to crush her in court. And as she stood up for the humane treatment of racehorses, she also faced down the system that caused their deaths. So this is an awesome rendering. You wow. can see it's all in sepia tones, and it tells her it tells her whole story, and it's really it's really beautifully done. That's so cool. Definitely pick that up. Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. The most radical thing you can do is love yourself and love each other. So I think mm -hmm. this is like a contemporary romance. It looks very cute, and I love this cover so much. Another cover that I adore this month. Reaper of Souls. Reaper of Souls. So this is a sequel, I believe. Gorgeous. Because it says the author, Rena Barron, is also the author of Kingdom of Souls. So this has got to be oh. part of a series, right? Power is a gift and a curse. A prince repelled by magic, a king bent on revenge, a witch doctor who does not walk alone. Witch doctor. I know. I like it. <laughs> she looks I... so tough on the cover. <laughs> I picked up A Court of Swans, which is a Derricotte novel by mm -hmm. Melanie Dickerson. So that might be part of a series. Mm -hmm. England 1381. It looks like it's kind of like a play on the Seven Swans, the, the Princess and the Seven Swans a little bit. Um, looks like Delia's seven brothers are accused of treason and the youngest one is 10 years old. They're all still pretty much little boys and they get put in the Tower of London where there's this Childlike Richard King II is executing anyone who poses a threat to his throne, and Delia 
has to team up with Sir, Sir Jeffrey to get those kids out, but can they trust each other? So it looks like it's a nice historical romance, possibly, and mystery. Ooh. Yeah, court politics. I don't sense any magic, though. Oh. That would have really put it over the edge for me. <laughs> a little magic is all Ashley needs. That's all I need. Okay, I've got Angel of Greenwood by Randy Pink. Another beautiful cover. Oh, wow, yeah. So you can, I don't know, you probably can't tell, but there's like flames in the background behind this girl. This is something you want to see. Beautiful. Okay. So I believe this is taking place during the, uh, the Tulsa, Tulsa riot. race riots, which yeah. is in the 1920s. 17 um, year old Isaiah Wilson, the town troublemaker, and 16 year old Angel Hill, a loner but mostly disregarded by her peers as a goody goody. <laughs> so um, they work together on the job, which is a mobile library, a three wheel, nice. two seater bike. We need one of those, Love right? Yes. Isaiah is eager to be in such quarters, close quarters with Angel every afternoon, but life changes on May 31st when a vicious white mob storms the community. Only then do Isaiah, Angel, and their peers realize who the real enemies are set on the Black Wall Street of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, wow. That's definitely one I want to read. All right, I picked up another silly one. Hot British Boyfriend. <laughs> How far would you go for love? Uh, after a horrifying public rejection by her crush, Ellie Nichols does what any girl would do. She flees the country. <laughs> she joins her high school study abroad trip to England. While most of her classmates are there to take honors courses and pad their college applications, Ellie is on a quest to rebuild her reputation and self-confidence. And nothing is more of a confidence booster than getting a hot British boyfriend. When Ellie meets Will, a gorgeous and charming Brit, she vows to avoid making the same mistake she did with the last guy she liked, which is why she strikes up a bargain with Dev, an overachieving classmate who she's never clicked with, but who does seem to know a lot about the things Will is interested in. If he helps her win over her crush, then she'll help him win over his. I sense a love triangle. <laughs> 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 All right, I've got The Project by Courtney Summers. I actually read this one because I love this author. Um, it's about two sisters and one of them joins a cult sort of by accident oh, wow. so she becomes a cult member and the other sister is an investigative journalist and she's trying to solve the mystery of where did her sister go and who are these people and it's really good oh, wow yeah did she also write the one the sadie one she did yeah oh. so and that one was really good i had was, no idea what was going that on that was good all right that's that's funny you picked up that one next because i was thinking of sadie when you were talking she actually was just telling me about this book. I, hope <laughs> yeah, I have been looking forward to this one by Tom Ryan. I hope you're listening. And yeah, I did think about Sadie too. Because there's like a podcast situation going on in both of them. It's very cool. It's called Every, Every Missing Person Has a Story. So when Delia was seven years old, she actually witnessed her best friend, Sibby, get taken, get uh, kidnapped. And when she, to she told the police everything she knew, but they, it didn't matter. They couldn't find the, the uh, kidnapper and Sibby went missing. So now she's, now she's 17 and she, has, she hosts a crime podcast called Radio Silent, which features missing persons cases and works with online sleuths to solve them. Isn't that neat? Well, another little girl in her town goes missing and the case is linked to Sibby's disappearance. And Dee feels like she has the chance to get answers with the help of her virtual detectives and an intriguing new girl at school. So it's a mystery, it's fun. I think, I think this is gonna be a good one. And it looks like it's going to be a very quick read too, because a lot of the podcasts, you'll, you'll read a lot, a lot of the podcasts is in there and that takes up a lot of pages. <laughs> yeah, so it's like just reading a conversation, people talking mm -hmm. to each other. Okay, so I've got a graphic novel here. It looks like a silly, cute one. Uh, Princess Decomposia and Count Spatula. <laughs> <laughs> Who says romance is dead? It says on the front. And then on the back it says, Welcome to the underworld. Princess Decomposia is overworked and underappreciated. King Wolfrin won't get out of bed. Count Spatula is a vampire chef with a sweet tooth, and he's about to turn everything upside down underground. That sounds so cute. All right, I picked up Loner by Georgina Young. Lona has dropped out of art school and no one is quite sure why, least of all, Lona. 
It's just that nothing in her life seems to make sense anymore, including art. She spends her days sneaking into the dark room at her old school to develop photographs and her nights DJing at the local roller disco. That's an interesting cat. Her aimlessness <laughs> terrifies her, but everyone else appears oblivious to her fears. Her parents are bewildered by her sudden lack of ambition. Her brother is preoccupied with his new girlfriend, and her best friend Tab seems to be drifting, drifting away. Even a budding relationship with a bass-playing, cello-shredding med student isn't enough to shake her existential angst. What more do you want? I know, she's got a lot going on. <laughs> Lona knows it's up to her to figure out what she wants to do with her life. The problem is she has absolutely no idea where to start. Join the club! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. Stop searching and it will find you. All right. Here the Whole Time by Vitor Martins. On the top it says, I read this in one sitting, laughing out loud and cheering. I love this book, Rainbow Rowl. So that's oh, a nice endorsement. Yeah. Um, I Two boys, 15 days, one awkward vacation. Philippe can't wait for winter break. Finally, he'll get some time away from his classmates who tease him about his weight. But Philippe's plan turns upside down when he learns that his neighbor will be staying with him for 15 days, which is a problem because A, Philippe has had a crush on him since forever, and B, Philippe has a whole list of body image insecurities and absolutely no idea how he's going to handle them while sharing a room with his lifelong crush. Suddenly, the days that once promised rest and relaxation and epic Netflix binging are a gauntlet of every unresolved issue in Philippe's life. But if he can overcome his insecurities, then maybe this break won't turn out to be such a disaster after all. Aww. Sounds cute. It does sound cute. I picked up City of Villains by Estelle Laurie. And it looks like it has a little bit of a Disney theme. You can yeah. kind of see Maleficent's Maleficent. shadow in there. And there's some tentacles around the corner. That would be Ursula. I love Ursula. I know. The villains are great, aren't they? <laughs> they are. They made us villains. Mary Elizabeth Hart is a high school senior by day, but by night she's an intern at the Monarch City Police Department. She watches with envy from behind a desk as detectives come and go, trying to contain the city's growing crime rate. When the daughter of one of the city's most powerful businessmen goes missing, Mary Elizabeth is thrilled that the police chief actually puts her on the case. But she soon discovers that one missing person is only be the beginning of a larger, more sinister mystery. As the truth circles closer to home, Mary finds herself caught in the fight between those who once had magic and those who will do anything to bring it back, even if it means creating a few monsters. Disney's villains meet a dark world in this gritty fairy tale inspired crime series that reimagines the origins of Maleficent, Ursula, Captain Hook, and other infamous Disney villains like you've never seen before. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, could be really fun. Mm -hmm. And it's not too big either. Oh, that means you better watch out. There might be a second one. Don't get stuck in a series if you don't want to. <laughs> That's me. That's me all the time. No. All right. I've got this beautiful collector's edition of this book called The Lives of the Saints by Lee Bardugo. It's illustrated, which is pretty cool. Oh, it's so, beautiful. Yeah, basically, <gasps> Lee Bardugo wrote this awesome uh, trilogy, which the first one is called Shadow and Bone. And it's sort of like a Russian-inspired fantasy world. Ooh. Yeah, they're super good. If you haven't read them, probably you wouldn't necessarily want to pick this up unless you had already read those. Because this is a book of stories about the saints in the religion of that world. So Very cool. Yeah, it's really beautiful, though. I'm definitely going to check out Shadow and Bone. Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, Ruin and Rising. I read the Six of Crows. Six of Crows is... Another series. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Set in the same universe, but different characters. Huh. No wonder I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I picked up The Valley and the Flood. That's a neat, neat picture, it isn't is. it? Welcome to Lotus Valley, Nevada. This little desert town attracts all kinds of curious characters. A cook whose food tastes just like home, a boy who can see the creatures that like to stay hidden, a prophet who knows how the story ends, a girl whose most painful memories are finally catching up to her, and in its darkest corners lie secrets that are best kept in the shadows. Some come visit, stay for a while, but be warned, you could get swept away. Nice, sounds interesting. Uh, oh, it sounds like a very quirky town where lots of things go up and down. And 
There is a girl. Rose believes in the prop if the prophecy comes true, then it will confirm her worst fear, the, P the P fear that PTSD she was diagnosed with after her sister Gabby's death has changed her in ways she can't face. Oh, so with help from new friends, Rose sets out to stop the flood. But her connection to it, to this strange little town, runs deeper than she could have imagined. Weird. So a good I can't get a handle on what mystery. is going on in this book. I yeah, can't like, either. Is it a mystery? Is it a fantasy? Is it about PTSD? Maybe sci-fi? I have no idea. Maybe it's all in her head. Yeah. Weird. Okay. I've got Love in English by Maria E. Andreu. 16-year-old Anna is a poet and a lover of language, except that since she moved to New Jersey from Argentina, hey, another Argentina hey. book, she can barely find the words to express how she feels. At first, Anna just wants to return home. Then she meets Harrison, very cute, very American boy in her math class, and discovers the universal language of racing hearts. <laughs> but when she begins to spend time with Neo, the Greek Cypriot boy from ESL, Anna wonders how figuring out what her heart wants can be even more confusing than the grammar they're trying to master. <laughs> After all, the rules of English might be confounding, but there are no rules when it comes to love. That sounds really cute. That does sound cute. <laughs> Romance. <laughs> I found Wondrous Journeys in Strange Lands by Sonia Nimur. And there's like nothing on the cover to give it away. <laughs> a bird. In a tent at the foot of a mountain in Palestine, many years ago, our storyteller and her twin sister are born. Her parents name her Kamar uh, or Moon and her sister Shams or Sun. Their tiny caravan is journeying from the mother's city back to the father's remote ancestral village atop the mountain. This village suffers from isolation and from a mysterious curse. Females are no longer born there. When her parents try to break the spell, their lives are cut short and Kamar and her sister are left to fend on their own. And so Kamar decides to pursue her mother and father's dream of discovering the world, its people and places. With the treasured book in hand that brought her parents together, she sets out on a daring journey on caravans and ships across empires. From her village to Jerusalem to Gaza, and then over continents, deserts, and seas, telling tales to survive, Kamar searches irrepressibly for life and endless stories within stories. Sonia Nemer's richly imagined historical fable recalls the famous travel narratives of the 14th century Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta. But the captivating uh, adventures of this heroine are the wondrous journeys we take when we discover we can do more than we ever dream possible, even in strange lands that decree we cannot. Really interesting. That sounds good. And I saw on the front it says yeah. it's translated. So. Oh yes, translated from, it doesn't say from. I don't know what language it was in, but wow, interesting. It starts out in Palestine, right? So yeah, sounds like it could very be very interesting. Good. It has very tiny scripts, so it's a long <laughs> book. <laughs> There's a lot of words packed right. in there. Am I got the last saying. one? Yeah. I have the last one. All right, as far as you'll take me by Phil Stamper. It's a cute cover. Let's see. Marty arrives in London with nothing but his ob oboe and some savings from his summer job. What is an oboe again? An oboe is an instrument like it kind of looks like clarinet. Oh, oh yes, he's holding it yeah, right there. It okay. sounds like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Not my favorite instrument. <laughs> Not a sexy instrument. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. He's excited to start his new life where he's no longer the closeted shy kid who slips under the radar and is now free to explore his sexuality without his parents' disapproval. From the outside, Marty's life looks like a perfect fantasy. In the span of a few weeks, he's made new friends, he's getting closer with his first ever boyfriend, and he's even traveling around Europe. But Marty knows he can't face up, he can't keep up the facade. He hasn't spoken to his parents since he arrived. He's tearing through his meager savings. His homesickness and anxiety are getting worse and worse. And he hasn't even come close to landing the job of his dreams. Will Marty be able to find a place that feels like home? Oh, in this heartfelt, aspirational, coming-of-age story, Phil Stamper takes readers on a journey about finding the people who become your home. Oh, that sounds like a nice feel-good read. We're cheering for you, buddy. Yes, you can do it. Okay, that's it for our box. So many good ones this Very month. Very good ones, If yes. any of these sounded good to you guys, place a hold on them and <laughs> you'll be able to pick them up 
um, and read them as soon as Ashley's done reading yes. them all. <laughs> and let us know what you think about them too. <laughs> all right, see, see you, you next, next time. One. Bye. Bye. All right. Yay, we did it. Hooray! Please let there be sound all the way through.